this morning's Mass offered for the repose of the souls of Joseph and Jean Russo, Cecilia Cecino, and Thomas Sweeney. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we sing your according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. We ask this through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the end he was glorified the seaward road, and the land west of Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispelled is darkness, for there is no gloom where but now there was distress. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at harvest, as people make merry in dividing spoils. For the yoke has burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and 
cured every disease among the people. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the past couple of weeks, we've seen the birth of our Lord, the manifestation of our Lord to the people, and then after that, he begins his public ministry. For 30 years, he lived a quiet life, hidden from the public in Nazareth, helping St. Joseph in the carpenter shop, praying, studying the scriptures, getting ready for the ministry that his father had prepared for him. Now he's begun his public ministry. Now he's begun to teach and show himself to the world. And in today's gospel, at the very beginning of his public ministry, our Lord sets out for us the parameters. He tells us exactly what it's about. This is why I have come and what I hope to accomplish. And there are two images that are used in today's gospel that our Lord is using to tell us, this is what I hope to accomplish, this is how I hope to accomplish it. And the one image that he uses is an image from the Old Testament, from the prophet Isaiah who 700 years before Christ came, gave us the most prophecies, the most clues about where God would come, what he would do. And so the prophet Isaiah is quoted. That's one point in the gospel. The other point in the gospel is the theme of light and darkness. Throughout the whole of the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, there's a theme of light and darkness. That's the other, and they both come together. And this is how. First of all, there's a dig in today's gospel. Uh, there's a little bit of a dig given about people who came from Galilee. Israel, in the time of our Lord, it was roughly divided up into provinces. The same way in America we have states. They had provinces. And the provinces were named after the children of Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel. And way up in the north in Israel, on the border with Lebanon, there was the province of Zebulon and Naphtali, another province. These, they would have been like Nassau and Suffolk County, way up north in Israel. It was in these provinces that our Lord lived. Galilee was the general area, just like Long Island would be the general area for Nassau and Suffolk. Galilee is what you call the whole area with all its subdivisions. That's where our Lord 
lived. He lived in Nazareth, Capernaum, we hear Cana mentioned, many different little towns in the north along the Sea of Galilee. Those people had their own accent, which is very interesting. Uh, I know in other parts of the United States, they claim that we have an accent. We don't have an accent. We speak proper, normal English. They talk funny. But they will tell you, right, oh, you're from New York, aren't you? Yes, we speak normal English. Well, in our Lord's time, when our Lord opened his mouth, he spoke Aramaic, which was the language of Israel. He spoke it with an accent. He had a northern, a Galilean accent when he spoke. Remember, there's one point in the Bible where a servant girl tells St. Peter, aren't you from Galilee? I can tell by your accent. Our Lord spoke with Galilean accent. So you have different provinces in Israel, and you have different accents, and then one province always has something to say about people from another province, just as we in New York have things to say about people from New Jersey or people from Pennsylvania. It's not right, they're generalizations, but people do. You ever hear people say, oh, all right, the kids from that neighboring town, oh, they're thugs, like our kids are, but those are. People say things about neighboring provinces. What did they say about people from Galilee? They called them pagans. They said they were godless, the people from Galilee. Why? The people in the towns where the Blessed Mother was from and where our Lord grew up and where St. John, they called them pagans? Yes. Godless? They were. Blessed Mother and St. Joseph were very religious. The apostles were religious, but most of the people in those areas were kind of godless. And the reason why they were godless is the same reason people live without God today. It hasn't changed. It didn't change 700 years before Christ came, when Isaiah the prophet called them godless, it didn't change when Christ came. It hasn't changed now. Godless people. Why? Because religion and the practice of religion is inconvenienced. And they didn't want to be inconvenienced. They lived up in the north. According to the law of Moses, what God told Moses and what Moses told Israel. A few times a year, a good religious Jew had to go to Jerusalem and you had to offer sacrifice in the temple. Remember last week we talked about the lamb? Once a year you had to go and offer a lamb in atonement for your sins. You had to go for Passover. You had to go to bring a child to be dedicated to God. There were times when a person had to go to Jerusalem. If you lived up north in Galilee, that was a three-day journey. It was a three-day walk. So, it took you three days to get to Jerusalem. Maybe you stayed in Jerusalem two days. That's five. Then you had another three-day walk back. That's eight days, maybe nine days. So that's nine days you had to close your shop. That's nine days you couldn't go to work. That's nine days you didn't get paid. You had to do this a few times a year. This is what a religious person did in the time of our Lord. It was in convenient, and they didn't want to do it. 
And in doing that, they drifted away from God. People do that today. You hear people all the time. Oh, Father, I work hard all week. Sunday's my only day off. I have to rest, so I can't come to church. You know what that means? So you're going to stay home and rest? No, you're not. You're going to stay home. You're going to work. Because there are things to do around the house that you didn't do all week, and now you're going to have to do them on Sunday. You come to church. This is the only place in the week where you really get total rest. You sit there. I do the work. You just open your heart to God, and you listen to the prayers. But people convince themselves that I have to rest so I can pray to God at home in my own way. Truth. No, you don't. You don't at all. You don't listen to the scriptures. You don't receive Holy Communion. You're not praying to God at all. You're breaking the third commandment, which says on the Sabbath we have to keep it holy by worshiping God. Well, the people in Galilee did the same thing. It was inconvenient. And for them, it was inconvenient. It was a three-day journey, six days coming and going, plus time. For us, people today, the inconvenience of their journey, it's 10 minutes in a car with a heated seat. But it's inconvenient. I'm home. I'm comfortable. I don't want to leave my house. And what happens then? When there is no contact with God, now we, the prophet Isaiah, 700 years before Christ came, used an Old Testament theme, light and darkness. Remember that when God began creation, in the first book of the Bible, it says the world was a formless dark void and confusion reigned over the darkness and the first thing god did when he created was he created it says the great luminaries of the sky the sun the moon the stars so there would be light because darkness brings confusion and darkness brings Fear. Think of intense darkness. Here in New York, where we live, it never really gets dark. You go out there on the street at 3 a.m. You could read a newspaper on the street at 3 a.m. Why? Because the street lights, you look to the west, the city lights. You ever read in the paper where they say, oh, you got to look in the northern sky tonight at 7 o'clock. You're going to see the green comet that only appears once every 200 years. You live here, forget it. You're not going to see anything in the sky because it never gets dark enough to see any of those things where we live. So we don't know darkness. But think to yourself, you go upstate New York. You go out to Pennsylvania in the western part of Pennsylvania. You go on a country road at night where there are no lights anywhere except your, the headlights of your car. That is dark. You're driving along that road white knuckle because I don't know what's on the side of the road. I can't see. Is there a shoulder or is there a drainage ditch? Am I close to the edge? I don't know. It's too dark to tell. We don't know where we're going in the dark. We don't see dangers in the dark. We don't see problems in the dark. Darkness is chaos. Darkness is confusion. Darkness is fear. When you're sick at night, you get sicker. A fever spikes at night. If you've got a problem, when does it really bother you most? At night, when you're supposed to sleep. Someone was telling me that there were foremen of a construction crew. 
And sometimes the crew works at night, and sometimes the crew works at day. But he says, a wise foreman ships the crews around. No, it's not good for you to work always at night. It's not good for you to be isolated by the darkness and even from the fact that the rest of the people that you know are sleeping when you're working and when you're asleep, they're awake working. It's not good to always be in the darkness. It does something to your head. So darkness has a very deep meaning. And the prophet Isaiah said 700 years before Christ came, those people in Galilee, those people who don't practice their religion because it's inconvenient, those people who don't make the journey to God, oh, they got all the reasons, oh, they're very glib, they, they, they can talk, or talk you in the face because they know all the answers. He said they live in darkness because without God, and without the practice of faith, you're in darkness. You don't know the dangers. They're out there. There were beasts that devour and people that harm. You don't see the dangers. You don't know them. You have no protection from them because only God in his goodness protects us. You don't know where you're going. You don't know the direction that lies ahead of you. This you don't know. So you live in fear because you can't see and you don't know. You're without God and you're living in darkness. So Isaiah said, when the Messiah comes, he's going to go to those who live in darkness and don't know the darkness they're living in. And he's going to turn on light, just as he did at the creation. He's going to turn on the light that is faith in God. Because when we know God, God explains things to us. God shows us things. God gives us guidance in the darkness of the world that we live in. God points out the dangers and keeps us on the path that will get us safely to heaven. It's amazing when you think of how little has changed. The people in Galilee, the people that our Lord knew so intimately, they were his family, they were his neighbors. The people who lived in an area where they knew all the reasons why they didn't have to practice their faith. And the answer, you live in darkness. You live in fear. In the world that we live in, people have the same reasons. Have they made a better world? All the people that now, oh, I stay home. I pray in my own way. Yeah, have you made it better? Are people nicer out there? Is there more respect? Is there more kindness? Or has selfishness grown to a horrifying point in society where everyone thinks of themselves and their own needs first? And there is so little respect for other people and their needs as well. Has it become better. God came into the world for a purpose. And Christ tells us at the beginning of his ministry, this is why I came. Without me, without the teaching I can give, the guidance, the protection, you live in darkness and you live in fear of that darkness. With faith, I create the luminaries of the sky to guide you and to protect you and to give direction to your journey. I wonder, 
are people listening today. Some are most worried and are. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please stand for the Creed. I believe in one God. Amen. Blessed be the kingdom of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now forever, for ages unto endless ages. Amen. And the response to each petition will be born by mercy. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our bishops, priests, religious, and all faithful servants of God, let us pray to the Lord. That our president may be God fearing, our elected officials blessed with wisdom, and that God will watch over and protect our Amen. service men and women. Throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For the peace of the whole world, for the peace and well-being of our Holy Roman Catholic Church, and for the union of all churches, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those suffering from the devastating effects of natural disasters, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the sick of the parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For deceased family and friends, especially John Bacigalupo and Patricia Muller, and the souls of those enrolled in our parish purgatorial society for this month, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O God, help, save, pity, protect us, who call upon you in faith, for we do rely on the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary, imploring St. Gennaro, all the saints, we commend ourselves, each other, our whole lives to Christ our God, to thee be glory for ages unto endless ages. Amen. Amen. Okay. Next weekend, throats will be blessed after all weekend masses. <laughs>
people to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all so much church. Again, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, accept our offerings, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. You lift them up to the Let Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, freed us from an ending death. By rising from the dead, gave us life eternal. So with angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, the hosts, the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. Without end, we acclaim. and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. <laughs> chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember brothers and sisters fallen asleep in hope of resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Apostles, the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.